crushing you and you're the fifth link down on the page. So you're not getting much business, but let's go outbid him right now and watch what happens. And the next day he literally tripled the revenue in his business. Um, he's a local business. All right, live from LA. Hi, everybody. This is Norm Ferrar, aka the Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing scaling and growing your e com business with cold traffic. We're going to be talking about what makes one company win over another company with paid advertising, what's working with Facebook ads today, and what makes a company attractive to acquisition companies. All right. Welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. It's so bizarre doing lunch with Norm on the West Coast. It should be breakfast with Norm. So today, special edition breakfast with Norm. Today, we're going to be discussing scaling and growing your e-commerce business with cold traffic. Our guest has sold several millions worth of products online over the past month and many companies to do the same. Uh, let's try that again. It's, it's, it is it's on the West Coast and it is morning. So just keep that in consideration when it comes down to the blooper reel, reel Kelsey. So let's try this again. And he's helped many companies do the same through a skill, his skill in media buying and running ads across multiple platforms. He is presently focusing his energy on his marketing agency and e-commerce acquisition company where he helps connect qualified buyers with great e-com companies. And today we're talking about a first time guest and it's Dave McMenemy. All right, so uh, Kelsey, word from the sponsor, then come right back. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by VAA Philippines. Looking for a high quality virtual assistant for your business? With the rigorous screening, intensive Amazon and Walmart training, and ongoing professional development, get the peace of mind with skill and motivated virtual assistants for a long-term working relationship. Hire through VAA today, and now let's get back to the show. And let's get going. Welcome, David. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, our pleasure. So I say hours because Kelsey does a you know a little bit. I do most of it, but Kelsey does a little bit. No, actually, he does all the work. He yes. he yes. does all the work, as you probably see, right? He, all the emails and everything else. But um, anyways, I think this is going to be great. Um, you're just going to have to pardon my voice today. Uh, it was out. We were uh, at a dinner that was loud, and we were kind of screaming across the table. It's not the cigars. It's screaming across the table. So uh, <laughs> yeah. anyways, I'll do my best uh, to uh, to talk and have conversation because I guess that's what a podcast host is supposed to do is have conversation. Yeah, All right. Kelsey, and I were, Kelsey and I were just marveling at, before we hopped on, uh, you know, these events that it's a younger man's game. Like I, I am so done saying? with going to five, saying? six events that we're both so young <laughs> oh, and okay. vibrant and full of oh. life. But... <laughs> Any conversation is literally screaming at the top of your lungs, you know, while your ears are bleeding from the noise around you. And uh, then, yeah, going to bed, going to bed 30 minutes before you wake up. So exactly, yeah. exactly. So today's going to be interesting. Um, we talk about external traffic, the benefits of external traffic. This conference has some of the top people in the world when it comes to external traffic. So uh, anyways, let's let's just back it up a little bit mostly amazon sellers i can see in the comment section right now why external traffic i think i know the answer we talk about it all the time but why do people still not use external traffic i mean the the biggest benefit of external traffic is scale like predictable yeah. scale um you know I've, I've never really gotten into the game of organic traffic and you know trying to fight my way up rankings because you know like i used to do a lot of google ads and people like man just this just do seo do seo i'm like you can't really control it like i can't wake up today and say i'll be number one today right. and that's why i always fall in love with paid ads because 
like I, I helped a guy locally this last week. I'm like, your competitor is crushing you and you're the fifth link down on the page. So you're not getting much business, but let's go outbid him right now and watch what happens. And the next day he literally tripled the revenue in his business. Um, he's a local business and it, it's just so powerful, right? So the power of cold traffic is unbelievable. Why don't people do cold traffic? Why don't they do external traffic? A lot of times they don't really even have an offer to be able to do it. Um, to make it work and it can be very expensive to figure it out and you know they don't really have the know-how um and which is again it's not your fault it's not like you're a terrible business person if you don't know how to do this it's a, it's definitely a specialized thing um but it's it's not easy so we've got a, a bunch of people that are listening right now i'm just kind of curious do you handle your own uh external traffic or do you go to an agency so yes or no and I always found that this is one of those areas that I am not the external traffic guy. I, I, I've tried myself many times to be a good external traffic guy, and I can't. Uh, it's like accounting with me. So I, ha I hire that out. I, I mean, it's just, it's not my strength. Um, you know, it's just not a strength. So I don't want to work on my weaknesses. Because uh, what will end up happening with your weakness is that you just pay through the nose. And some people will complain that, oh, you know, it's going to cost me X percentage or it's going to cost me this fee. Well, guess what? If you try to do it yourself, uh, first of all, your results are going to suck. You're going to probably waste a ton of money and uh, you're going to say that it doesn't work. I mean, that, that's the results that or that's what I've heard. You know, and there's one other huge reason that, uh, and did Kelsey tell you I go down different rabbit holes? I just, just, you know, the first time on the podcast. So sometimes I just go off, but, uh, but anyways, the other big reason for external traffic with Amazon right now is because of the referral program. So you still get those 10 points back. So just, just imagine you're getting 10% of the gross back to you in a form of a credit. So I, I don't know. It, you know, it, it covers a lot of the costs. Yeah, that's a powerful incentive. And, it, yeah. you know, m most of the traffic that I'm running right now for clients is, you know, through Facebook, through YouTube, through Google ads. Um, yeah, I, I really haven't dove into the world of Amazon paid traffic. Um, a good friend of mine, Daniel, who, who referred me over to you guys, um, he does a ton with uh with the amazon traffic and and helps people get their offers up on there um but i know it could be really really powerful for amazon too absolutely it could be uh, it could be a game changer uh you know you can do so much with ppc but if you want to um really break through that plateau uh, external traffic and you can you can reach your demographic or your audience well that's the first you have to know that and you know then uh, secondly uh depending on the platform it could really you can really see some great results um just through simple ppc we've been talking about it quite a bit here and just showing results that my mouth drops in different forms that you know i would never have considered but uh let's talk about uh the agency side of it for a second so you could do it yourself but what about going out there and, and talking uh, to an agency? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Well, the advantage right off the bat is they've done it before. Hopefully they've done it before. Um, uh, they probably run a myriad of different products. So having that expertise, having you know that experience um, can help you get a leg up and get you started a lot faster than doing it yourself. They, with the agency game, good agencies understand that it is all about the creative right now. It's not about, you know, niche finding these super, you know, niche audience targeting and going after that anymore, especially with the iOS 14 update that happened with Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's about having solid, solid creatives and being able to test and rotate creatives as fast as possible. So if you're doing it on your own, you may not even know like which direction to start looking um, for good creatives, but um, going with an agency, they're going to have like 
a, a huge amount of, hey, these creatives have worked for a toothpaste company. This one's worked for a back brace company. Let's just find, you know, here's here's the best practices with that. Um, one of the disadvantages I would say with going with an agency could can be you might just be another peon um, of their customers. Like if you're not their top customer, sometimes you don't get the time and attention that you deserve. So, you know, going with some of these bigger agencies, they might look at you and go, how much do you spend a day? Okay. You're not really spending much right now. Yeah. It's not really worth our time or, right. Hey, we'll just, we'll, we'll collect your fee. We'll collect your base fee. Cause a lot of these guys will charge a base fee. And then it's a percentage of your ad spend is kind of how it works. Um, and if you're not big enough, again, you just, you don't get the attention. But you know what? You're right. If you're dealing with a medium to larger company and you're talking to them, that sales rep, you should be asking all sorts of questions, which we'll get into in a second. But a lot of the times you just get some schlump, you know, that knows nothing. They're just breaking into the business. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen terrible results coming from really great agencies. And it's all because of the schlump factor. You know, you don't get the top person you get somebody at the bottom breaking in because you don't you don't fit their criteria and i think it's something that you should be talking about when you when you do your interview and you should be interviewing them and they should be interviewing you so it should be kind of be a reciprocal thing to see if there is a fit so just don't go with the first agency or don't go with the first person it's really got to be a fit with the personality do they understand uh, your product or your audience? Do they understand uh, just your market in general? But what are some of the questions that you think sellers should be talking to or asking you? I'm just kind of curious. And before you answer that, just talk to the lamp for a second. I'm grabbing my coffee. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Lamp. There was a great line in a movie one bad. time. It says, okay. I love lamp. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm back. I got my coffee. See, my wife's not here and I can still get my own coffee. I just guess I have to fire self-made man right there. <laughs> there Love there, it. There we go. Okay. So let's, let's talk about some of these questions that you should be asking. So I want to do this. I want to explore it. I'm newer to Amazon, maybe newer to intermediate. I don't have a hundred thousand dollar budget. Let's start from there. The first question is, you know, how do you measure your results? How are you measuring which creative is beating another creative? Like what, what, um, what is your source of truth for stats and how do you guys monitor that? And what visibility do I have into that? If you can't see which creatives winning in a, you know, minute by minute basis, then there's something wrong. Um, if, if they're giving you reports, like how, how is reporting handled should be number one. Because again, if you can't measure this, the results, you can't scale anything. If you don't know which specific creative is doing something, you can't scale anything. Then they're just kind of throwing money into a pile and they, they hope something comes out and works. I've seen that over and over and over again. So that would be number one. And number two is how often are you rotating creatives? Do you handle your creatives in-house um, or is that on me? Because I've seen agencies and I've even consulted with agencies where the creatives are on the client and the media buying is on the agency. So then they just, they get by with this ships passing in the night. Like, so there's no messaging. Oh, there's no yeah, sync oh, in the messaging. There's no sync in the message, but there's also no, um, no speed. Like media buying is all about speed, speed of implementation, speed of adjustments. Like, can we tweak things on the fly? I'm seeing this isn't working right now. Let's get our creative team to, to get something new out the next morning. Um, so if you're constantly putting the onus on the client, hey, you need to, where's our creatives? Oh, these aren't that good. Okay, go back and do another iteration. Then a week later, and it's like, you're already a quarter of the way through the testing of your month. Like you should have gotten at least five tests during that week done. Um, so that's a, a huge one. Who handles the creatives and how are the stats analyzed? Like what, how is everything measured? Those would be the two biggest things that I would ask right up front. The one other thing that I like talking about, well, it's truth and budgeting. So a lot of, especially if they're smaller agencies, uh, they want to get that new client. And so the client will ask about the budget 
and usually it's low bald. A lot of the times it's low bald. I I heard, and this goes back probably two years ago now. I I was on a call with an agency with my client, and they asked about the uh, the budget, and my client said, "Well, I have about three hundred dollars." And they said, "Okay, a day? Uh, no, a month." And it's like, what? I, like, we cannot do anything with three hundred dollars a month. <laughs> but I was waiting for them to say something, and they never did. Like, it was just like, "Oh, yeah, well, we can work on it. It's just a slower." Are you kidding me? You know, it, and sometimes we don't want to hear that as sellers. We don't want to hear that, oh, I need to spend $500 a day or $300 a day. You need that to get a result. If not, you're just throwing your bloody money away because you can never figure out what's going to be working, especially with split testing. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably um, something that's an important factor as well. If somebody doesn't give you a reasonable budget. And nowadays it's a little bit higher. But uh, let me ask, what's working right now? that can put you beyond a level playing field with your competition? I mean, it, it, it all comes down to the offer. Like, what is your specific offer? If you're just saying like, I have this really cool doodad and here's some cool features about it. Um, that's not really a standout. Everyone has one, right? Everyone's got a widget. Everyone's got, got something going on. You need to have a killer offer. So something that is an absolute no brainer that gets them as a customer for you on Amazon. I know it's a little bit different. Um, so, you know, just having like a coupon code, like, you know, those coupon check boxes that stands out a little bit, obviously yeah. having it on as prime, um, quick delivery, easy refunds, like really easy customer service, that kind of stuff stands out when it comes to running cold traffic outside of Amazon having a just irresistible no-brainer offer where the value is just incredible to somebody and and there's no risk on their side it's either a free sample a free trial of something um you know buy one get one free like there's just so much value in there that stands out to them um that's number one number two is get the emotional connection with them find a way to tell story like We've, we've done it since the history, the beginning of man, right? History has been passed down through story, 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 story. And I am a huge believer as a copywriter um, that you draw in your customer base with just an amazing story that pulls at their heart. Um, and you can do that with like almost anything, like any, any product, whether it's a can of Red Bull, um, you know, telling a story of how you're, you're driving home late. Um, from a conference and all you can think about is seeing your daughter's eyes when you get home and you know, the sound of her laughter and, but I'm too tired and I have to pull over and, oh my gosh, I found a can of Red Bull in my car. I'm ready to, you know, whatever it is, like something you can tell a story that highlights a little bit of that product and draws your customer in. Because if your customer doesn't believe that you understand them, that you get them, they won't buy from you and they won't continue to buy from you. Like you want a relationship created with them. So if you can do that through your copy in the beginning, where they immediately see like, oh my gosh, this company just speaks my language. This is ridiculous. Um, they're going to buy from you. And then they get to your offer. That's just like, wow, they get me. And it's a complete no brainer. Well, I'd, I'd look like an idiot if I didn't try this. So that that's what makes you really stand out. And down the line, makes you you know highly desirable for for a company to want to come in and buy you because you can scale and you can rinse and repeat and you have predictable numbers of like here's our acquisition side of the business it's really powerful um so yeah that's that's long long answer to your question have a great offer and have really really good copy that draws in the emotions and makes you feel like you connect with your client yeah one of the things we have a, <clears throat> a guest on he's been on a few times but stephen black and he talks about getting to know the lingo and the best way that he does, he goes into these groups and he uses, at least he did on the podcast, scuba diving. And he could get into scuba diving and he could just niche down on different types of scuba diving and whatever. I, I don't know anything about scuba diving, but he comes down and he can hear <clears throat> and talk the lingo. They he, like There's completely different terminology for things. 
And then he incorporates that not only in the listing, but also in his advertising. It's like you said, people can relate to that. You know, if it's yeah. just the same old lingo that this, a, a layman would just understand, it's it's not the same impact. But if I can identify with that person, that's a whole different story. This person understands me. And I, I think when you take a look at all of these advertisers from Red Bull, you know, uh, uh, like I like all my caffeinated things, my Coke, uh, Coca-Cola, uh, my coffee, <laughs> you know, it's all caffeinated, but they all have a message that, you know, is delivered to me. I'm their audience and I, I can uh, like, I, I can uh, re relate to them. And with Amazon, you don't really, you, you get that chance. You get that chance in your um, titles, you get that chance in your bullets, but you have to get, you have to be able to have the quality or that perceived value or get their attention to do that. And that's the same thing with what you're doing. Like you've got to be able to grab their attention where they go, aha, this is, I want to click on this. I want to get more information. Yep. Yep. And, a, and another great place to go discover, you know, the language of your customers is to survey your customers. That's like a great idea. Out, yeah. Send out a survey, ask questions. Like, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to talk to your customers. Like a lot of times as, as product owners, you're like, I just, I'm happy they bought. And if they talk to me, it's bad news, you know, yeah. but don't, you got to break through that barrier if you really want to get to that next level. So yeah, don't be afraid to talk to them. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone. Hey, so-and-so, yeah. or, you know, take two of your agents on your customer service team and break out, you know, whatever, 20% of their day or 10% of their day, whatever you can afford to do to just have outbound calls because you, you will find that there's cross-selling and upselling opportunities on every one of those calls. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do that to start like, Hey, you're, you're my upsell person. Um, but just get them to start asking questions and thanking them for the purchase and ask if there's anything we can do. And yes, it might create a little extra work for you, but it also might help you automate um, some really easy solutions for your customers so that you don't get more customer service tickets coming in that kind of waste your time or whatever you think. But um, yeah, that's definitely something I would do to start getting to understand the language of your customers a little bit better. Talk to them. Yeah, I mean, great idea. Just, yeah, that's the old thing. You know, the old rotary phone, call them. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, the other thing, I was talking to a guy yesterday uh, when we were having the cigars and he was talking about uh, he has a higher dollar, higher ticket private label product. And he has three different people working with him. He has a qualifier in sales. Mm -hmm. He has the other one that'll do the, um, uh, sorry, he has the lead gen person. He has the qualifier and then he has the closer. There's three different. So it goes through one, it goes to the next, it goes to the next. and I think that's a great idea if you can do that. Now he sells a lot, so you can't do that right off the bat. But just getting into the approach of lead gen, quali quali uh, a qualifier, and then a close. Yep, it's it's awesome, and yep. even you know, like what you're doing, it it doesn't have to go directly over to a promo. It could be engagement. It could be value. You're adding value, so it could be for brand awareness. It doesn't have to be go in for the kill. Yep. So do you layer, do you layer your ads with like some sort of value, 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 or a benefit or feature, and then boom, go in for value or go in for the uh, sell? So I lead with emotion, like emotional connection first. I lead okay. with story to draw them in to to let them know that I understand them. I've been mm -hmm. in their shoes. I know them better than they know themselves. And then I go from there into, um, so it'll go from like a long form ad, story copy ad with static image or a video. And then it will go to the sales page that might have, <clears throat> have a little bit of story copy in there, but then goes into what the product is and why it's a little bit different, what the unique mechanism is of that. And then it leads to a no brainer offer. Okay. All right. So we are at the bottom of the hour and at the bottom of the hour, if you're new to the podcast, is when we talk about our giveaway today. 
So we do have a giveaway at the end of every podcast. It's simple to enter. It's just hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people. You get a second entry. And David, why don't you tell us a little bit about the giveaway today? So today's giveaway is a free 30 minute cold traffic consultation. And what I do on these is I will do a zoom call with you and walk through what your product is, what your offer page is, and how can we set it up in a way that could handle cold traffic? Are there optimizations that can be made? Maybe you don't have any of that, but I can look at what your product is and then help you kind of back out. How do we get this ready to buy media to it um, in a scalable way? that uh, that helps you guys acquire more customers. So depending on where you're at in the stage of cold traffic, um, I can definitely help you get to a higher level. Um, so you can rinse and repeat, spend that, you know, $30,000, $40,000 a day if that's where your company can handle right now. But I can help look at your page and make sure that that can happen. So regardless, if you've never done this before and you, you just want some insight, which is awesome, you'll be able to talk to an expert that specializes this and put you in the right direction so you don't go and spend a ton of money down the wrong path and then just be told that it has to be corrected. So then for those intermediate and advanced, what, what better, you know, to be able to sit down with David, talk about it, and the same thing, you might be going down the wrong, uh, the, the wrong path, but at the same time, you might be going down the right path, and all you need is a few tweaks. So it's an awesome giveaway today. Hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Tag two people. And Kelsey, if you're doing your job, you'll be hitting the button right about now. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by Jeff Schick Legal. Amazon suspensions are very real. But how do sellers like us protect ourselves against these costly suspensions without spending thousands of dollars? For a very low monthly retainer of just $89, get full access to Amazon attorney Jeff Schick. Mention Lunch with Norm and receive 50% off the first two months. Visit jeffschick.com today. That's J-E-F-F-S-C-H-I-C-K.com. Now let's get back to the show. This is the first time I've had yellow Red Bull. And I'm trying to figure out what flavor it is. Can't read it on the can, but uh, anyway, the flavor it, is yellow, it, it and that's what they say the yellow edition. What the hell's yellow edition? But um, very unique flavor. I'm gonna stick to my regular Red Bull from now on. <clears throat> Although, plum Red Bull is incredible, that's my favorite. So, what's your favorite Red Bull? Anybody, let me know. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now let's talk a little bit about what working with Facebook ads yeah there's two main tracks with Facebook ads you can either go old school which is, you know a lot of people start out on Facebook with just a static image just a still image in some short bullet copy you know whatever one or two lines of copy and then a call to action that leads over to a product page um, that doesn't quite work anymore because of how flooded the marketplace is and how much competition there is in there. So more than ever with Facebook, you have to stand out. Um, what I find is working and has been working for the last couple of years is long form copy, as I've talked about, telling a story <clears throat> that looks, <clears throat> excuse me, that looks like, it looks like you're emoting on Facebook. It looks like you're just ranting about something. It doesn't have to be negative. It could be telling a story of, you know, how you just lost your cat or something, whatever it is that ties into your product somehow. Um, that is working because it draws people in. And some of the stuff that I write is like, <laughs> it's like 500 characters or more, or 500 words, sorry, or more. It is long. Um, but people get sucked into the drama. That's why they're on Facebook is because they want to check out from their life and they want to get distracted by something. So you use, using story in that copy works really well with a powerful static image that backs up what your product is, and then a call to action over to a sales page. That is working for like e-commerce style products. Um, another one that's working, and it's a little harder to get into to know how to do it is video, um, like short form video ads that are you know around 90 seconds to two and a half minutes um, that have a 
really good, we call them clickbaits, that like the first three to five seconds, like if you watch Mr. Beast, any of his videos, he every video he produces is a masterclass in this. The first three to five seconds is so engaging. And I know he spends the majority of his time, like 90% of his time to produce a video is spent on the first 60 seconds of a video to make sure in the first 10 seconds, especially to make sure somebody's like, what just happened? Okay, I, I got to wind that back. Like, what did I just see? Um, something that grabs your attention. And then the rest of the video, you know, goes from a really good lead to a really good close. So there's a specific format with those videos and it can take a little bit to get the copyright and have somebody who's really good on camera and get the cut and the edit. Um, but that is another way that I've seen companies go from like $2,000 a day in ad spend up to $40,000, $50,000 a day in ad spend. It's just having a powerful, uh, you know, one and a half to two minute video that leads again to a sales page from there. So those things are working right now presently. I just switched a customer over from uh, video ads to static ads and I'm finding the cost per thousand. So the CPM is lower on the static ad and uh, that makes his CPA. So his cost per acquisition or his, his cost per action is lower. And that's the goal, right? Lowest cost per action as possible, uh, lowest CPM as possible. So you can make the most profit on the back end. You're muted, Norm. Still muted. Yep. There all right. Go. Don't know how that. Kelsey, stop <laughs> muting me. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's all Kelsey's fault. Uh, all right. So what about and what role does AI have in this? Uh, can you use AI to figure out what's, what's better creative or generate creative? Any thoughts on this? You can use AI to generate creatives. Um, actually, Facebook has built in AI into their, their ads platform. So they will do creative testing for you. The thing I don't really like about it is it doesn't tell you which one wins. It just, mm. it, like you can load five images in and it will do like a, an, an optimization, an auto optimization for you and optimize for the best headline, the best ad copy um, and the best image. And it will just continue to rearrange until it finds the best one, but it won't tell you this image one with this headline B and this copy uh, C, these were the best combination. So it, yes, it will give you probably the best cost per sale, um, but you can't really learn from that. It knows, but you don't know. So it is kind of in there right now, um, but again, it doesn't give you quite a lot of communication. All right, well, that kind of sucks. Hopefully yes. they change that around. Yes. So, so let's talk about the offer. And when you talked about it earlier, I, I know uh, uh, one of the sponsors of the podcast, uh, uh, Post Purchase Pro, they call it a mafia offer, an offer you can't refuse. But what makes a good offer when running cold advertising? It's, it's all about risk reversal. So as a customer, I've heard uh, Perry Belcher talk about it like this, like it's, it's all about your own status. Like what status do I have at all times? Like if I'm buying a new sports car that raises my status when I'm driving around my friends, if I take a risk on a business opportunity, I'm telling all my friends about it. I am risking lowering my status if the business opportunity doesn't work. Right. So it's kind of an ego thing. If I see an offer on Facebook and it's maybe it's for a new, uh, a new golf bag or something like that, and I'm going to make a purchase for it. Is it set up? Is the offer set up in a way where my status won't be hurt if I'm wrong? Does that make sense? Like, will, will my ego be damaged if I make a wrong decision here? Now, a great way to reverse the risk there is to use a premium. Um, you offer, maybe it's a camping knife. I'm going to offer this camping knife. And as a premium, if you purchase today, think of the old infomercials with um, whatever his name was, Billy. Think of the old infomercials. If you buy the ShamWow rag today and pay for shipping and handling, we'll throw in two more, a $40 value. Right. So now the value of the free thing outweighs the value of the thing you're buying. 
and you're thinking and you're internally, man, even if this other thing doesn't work out, this thing's cool. I get a free Chia Pet if I buy that now. I've always wanted a Chia Pet. I've just never wanted to buy one, right? right? So you set up the risk reversal where it could be, you know, buy this today and there is a 365 day money back guarantee. And you're like, okay, I just can't lose. I could use up, maybe it's for toothpaste. I could use up the entire, whatever, six month supply of toothpaste and then say, I didn't like it and still get my money back. I have nothing to lose. So if you remove all the risk out of the new customer, because again, they've never bought from you before. So you have to remove that risk for them. You have to take a risk on them to want to come buy your product. And I, I see this as a huge issue from a lot of uh, new advertisers. They just think, well, I have the best product in the world. They should pay a premium for it. It's like, well, then you're going to have very, very few customers because most people aren't going to see the value unless they get it in their hands and they try it for themselves. Right. So what risk are you willing to take to get it into their hands? And do you truly believe it is the best, best thing out there and that it will benefit them? If you do, then you know that they'll refer their friends. So get it in their hands and create a new referral partner for you. Does that make sense? So kind of a long answer to reverse risk and make it an absolute no brainer for them. You just gave me a great uh, idea, though. Uh, lunch with Norm Chia Pets, where, you know, just the beard, the beard grows. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kelsey, pay attention. I can Write see that you. Down. <laughs> Write that down. The Lunch with Norm Chia Pet. Just saying. A great it, promo it, item. It'd have to be upside down. Beard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's, oh, my gosh. It's so hard to even laugh without coughing. All right. So, <clears throat> Why don't we go to some questions, Kelsey? Kelsey. All right. So we have a bunch of questions coming in. I think one that um, a couple of people were interested in is this question from Neil. What is the best way for a brand to discover which platform they should be running external traffic on or ads on? How do we know which platform will be the best for any particular brand to advertise on? Start spending money on it. I mean, honestly, it's you learn by doing the best. Um, just try it. And I would not recommend trying multiple at a time. Try one at a time. Set a budget for, I'd give it at least two weeks. Run it. Because um, when you're testing a new platform, you're not going to know immediately whether you have an offer problem, um, a price point problem, a copy problem, a creative problem. Like there's all these different variables when you're testing something new. If you are running existing ads on another platform, obviously take the best, the winner from that platform and try it on the next platform. But I know like with Facebook, the video ads and even the type of products that you advertise on Facebook are different than YouTube. And the language in how you talk to somebody on YouTube is different than Facebook. So it, you could have the same offer, but you have to adjust the copy a little bit. Like I know with YouTube, it's really, really important with video ads to call out in the first three seconds who you're talking to and why it's a benefit to them. You know, like if you're a man over 40 um, struggling with prostate issues, this could save your life. Right. I mean, I know it's super dramatic and YouTube doesn't usually like that, but that type of a phrase has to start your video because how many videos people are scrolling through, you have to stop them um, to, to watch your ad. So again, there's there's multiple aspects and multiple variables to be testing. Um, you would want to test one platform at a time, give it a few weeks to figure out, okay, which piece of this do I need to be adjusting and then move on to the next platform. Like with my clients, I test Facebook first and then I move over to YouTube. If they're existing running on YouTube, I'll adjust YouTube creatives and run there. And then I'll take the winner, make some adjustments for Facebook and test it on there. So I, there's no like, I'm sorry, there's no formula that I have anyways. And maybe somebody has one out there to say, if you have a um, if you have a kitchen tool, you should be running that ad on, you know, TikTok or you should be running it specifically on this platform. Um, again, I would just test it like any good argument in marketing comes down to the final phrase of let's test it. All right. OK, next question. All right, uh, next question is, let me see, we can't really 
Uh, okay, from Cohan, do you think external traffic ads could do better or even replace Amazon PPC ads? Um, and maybe this is a question for Norm. I, I think it goes hand in hand. So you've got to get, I think nowadays, right now, anyways, as at the time of this recording, you have to run PPC ads. Um, PPC ads will also help you with your organic rating, ranking, but you need to run it. There's no two ways about it. Amazon is a pay-to-play platform. Now, where you can um, use external traffic is to get those people who are either on the fence or <clears throat> these, these are people that have never heard of you who might not necessarily like Amazon. They might be, they might want to go to your e-commerce site and buy from there, which could just be a redirect over to Amazon. Um, or it could just be somebody that's just, they might be certain if you're in competitive, let's say you're in supplements. And I know this is bad for uh, Facebook, but, but let's say you're talking about supplements. It's such a competitive uh, field out there that you never get a chance sometimes to be seen unless you want to spend a ton of money where it might be different on different platforms. So if you're in Pinterest or if you're in TikTok or if you're whatever you're doing, might just you might find the perfect area that you could drive extra traffic or it could be for brand awareness. So always just keeping that brand in front of people's eyes when they are looking for, uh, you know, the new energy drink or whatever it is. Uh, and then they see your product uh, on uh, on Amazon when they're searching for, you know, putting in their keywords and all of a sudden there you are. They just saw you 10 times in a row and now you've got that brand awareness. Now, brand awareness, uh, like I love brand and I love building something around brand, but um, it can be expensive. So, but just driving traffic from external will definitely help uh, with your sales and you get 10% of that back, 10% on the gross. So nice. hopefully that answers it. Okay, um, this one's from Simon. Uh, any thoughts about threads? Thoughts about threads? I haven't did. I have not taken a deep dive into threads. I can see it again being a place to to get more in into the head of your customer. Um, mm -hmm. Are they currently? I don't know. Are they offering advertising within threads? I have not, not sure. explored threads at all. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right. I know like we've dabbled on it just with just to be on it, just to see if there's any opportunity there, but I we haven't done anything ourselves either. Um, okay, from Neil, do you consider blog articles with links to uh, your website or product page to be external traffic? And do you recommend blog articles? I, I like it. Um, I like blog articles in terms of organic traffic. Again, it's a little slow for me. Um, if if I, like Norm said, I don't like to, I won't focus on my weakness. I'll hire somebody to handle my weakness where that's their superpower. So if if you have somebody on your team or if that is your big strength is blog articles, yeah, keep turning it out there. I mean, if you're a brand that's gonna be, hey, we're gonna be around for the long haul, the more content you can have out there linking over to your products, the better. And by the way, uh, if you're if you want to learn how to write the perfect blog article, um, Steve Wiedemann is going to be on. Is it this week? Is it Friday or is it next week? Uh, next Friday. Next Friday. So if you've never listened to Steve's, uh, he's been on two or three times. There's some of our most popular podcasts, and he just lays it out and. Uh, most people, the high, high, high majority of people, unless they know SEO, are doing this completely wrong. Uh, there's no chance that you can win on this. And he shows you all the little tricks, at, at least in these uh, the podcasts. I'm not sure what we'll be talking about on this podcast, but how to lay it out, how to break a table, how to summarize, how to the links, uh, and and then making it at the end because a lot of people will put a lot of thought into a uh, a blog article. But there's no uh, there's no call to action. So at the end of the day, you've got this really you've got the traffic coming over, but nobody's going over to your product site to buy anything. 
So uh, it, it's pretty cool the way that he explains everything. And he's done an incredible, like he is, I, I don't know if he's number one, but uh, I do know, by the way, <clears throat> that when you used to type in SEO, uh, he would always come up number one in the search engines. And he ended up saying uh, he decided not to do that because he was getting razzed by a lot of people, his peers. So uh, anyways, he's going to be next Friday and we'll get into something like this. He's always interesting, just like you, David, just, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just talking about just really interesting ways that pr probably 90 percent of sellers don't even think about when they're putting out SEO. All right. Um, and we have a couple of questions or comments and questions from Simon. He says, uh, Amazon is designed for PPC. I've never seen anyone getting overly excited about attribution when it comes to Amazon. Um, but what do you uh, prefer to do? Drive traffic to your own website or do you go to marketplaces? So the, the There's so much power in your own customer list and owning the customer list. Now, Norm, you could probably speak this a little better. Does Amazon, they don't allow you to see the customer data, right? No. They, you don't own. So that is that is a huge thing. Um, and why cold traffic is so powerful outside of Amazon. And even as like, I don't know if you could do this as like an insert within your Amazon order, having a way to drive them to your off marketplace um, store, e-commerce store, whether it's Shopify or whatever you're using. Owning that customer data allows you to go reach that person again and again and again without having to deal with the Amazon mafia mm -hmm. and, you know, go through their hoops and continue to pay their fees to get seen. So I really like off traffic, or like off marketplace sales, because you get that customer data. You can pick up the phone and call that customer. So when I was referring to earlier, pick up the phone and call your customer, you probably don't have that data if it's all through Amazon. And if you want to have a long-term sustainable business, I would recommend starting to take a few of them off platform and just start that process, build a system where you can get your customers off of the Amazon marketplace and you can start capturing that data for yourself. Cold traffic is a fantastic way to do that. Um, and so is putting an insert into your products that gives them a QR code or a call to action over to your e-commerce store where there's a special incentive of why you should buy from your your off-market store, off-marketplace store. All right, good answer. All right, and we have one more comment left. I think this goes over nicely uh, from CoolHand99. He says, I've been trying a bit on my own for paid ads, but would 10,000% benefit from a pro's help? Well, we're in luck. We've got the Wheel of Kelsey happening in just a few minutes. Uh, if you write hashtag Wheel of Kelsey in the comments, you get your chance to win. Um, a free 30 minute cold traffic offer review consultation. Take two people for an extra entry. We're gonna be heading there in just a few minutes. Um, but yeah, just wanted to let everyone know we've got a bunch of entries happening. So get it in and I think that's it. Okay, and that's it for the questions, Kels? Yep, that's it. Okay, David, contact information. How can people get a hold of you? So you guys can find me uh, on LinkedIn. You can also find me over um, at redimit1.com. Um, maybe find me on Facebook. I'm probably the only person with my name on the planet. So it would be pretty easy to, to find me that way. Um, if you guys want to shoot me an email, yeah, there we go. Uh, you just put it in the chat for me. So yeah, you guys can contact me through that website there or david at redimit1.com. Happy to answer you guys' questions um, and help you guys out as much as I can. All right. Okay. So did Simon have a question? I just saw something come in from him. Uh, let's see. He says, uh, you mean own it, that owning the data, the much higher profits versus giving Amazon business and very low profits is a better option? I think he's he's being a little sarcastic. Not <laughs> Simon. Simon. <laughs> never, never <laughs> Simon. <laughs> All right, and then I see the comment, mind blowing. Okay, very good, Simon. All right, so uh, if you're interested in our giveaway today, uh, we're gonna be coming up in about 30 seconds to a minute. So last chance, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. Take two people, you grab a second entry, and that's for the uh, 30 minute console. 
with David, and he's going to be going through everything we're talking about today. So uh, anyways, we'll give you a last chance to get in, and then, uh, Kelsey, let's go to a word from our sponsor. We'll come right back. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by Shergo Marketing. Ready to take your brand to the next level on TikTok and Instagram? Shergo Marketing specializes in helping entrepreneurs and coaches build profitable brands on TikTok and Instagram and in less than 90 days. With Shergo Marketing, you can build your brand, create incredible video content, and increase leads without spending a single dime on ad spend. Visit ShergoMarketing.com today and elevate your brand. Now, let's get back to the show. All right. So we are back. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Kelsey, it's that time. It is. Here we go. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right. Thank you to all of our live listeners for entering. And uh, let's see who the winner is. We do this every single podcast. And uh, let's give it a spin. If you are the winner, please email me, kate at lunchwithnorm.com. And it looks like it's Steve. All right. There you go, Steve. Congratulations, Steve. Just email me, k at lunchwithnorm.com, and we'll connect you uh, with your prize. Congrats. Very good. All right. Well, that's it. We made through it, even though I have a no voice today. But uh, anyways, David, thank you so much for coming on. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much, Norm. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Lunch with the, lunch with the, lunch with the.